Welcome to this e-learning course on business process analysis for trade facilitation. Through a series of short videos and exercises, the course will introduce you to the concept of business process analysis, or BPA in short, and how it can be applied to simplifying trade procedures. The content of the course is very much based on the UN Next Business Process Analysis Guide to Simplify Trade Procedures, a very practical guide developed by trade facilitation practitioners for practitioners that has been applied throughout Asia and beyond to better understand existing trade procedures and to simplify them. In this first module, I will introduce you to the basic concept of BPA, and its relevance to trade facilitation. By the end of the modules, you should have understanding of what is BPA and why it is important to conduct BPA to simplify trade procedures. Let us start then by discussing what we mean by business process. In a general context, a business process is a collection of structured activities performed for a given purpose. In the specific context, of trade facilitation, business process can be defined as a collection of structured activities and procedures performed to move goods and related information across borders from buyer to seller. So business processes related to trade facilitation can be very broad or can be very specific in scope. For example, export of rice from Thailand, including document preparation, freight and customs clearance procedures at the Lam Shabang seaport is an example of a broad process. Application and obtaining of a phytosanitary certificate for exporting fruits from Kyrgyzstan, or import customs clearance process at the specific border checkpoints of Puncholing in Bhutan, are examples of much more specific business processes, covering only one or a very limited number of documents or procedures involved in the overall trade transactions. So in turn, business process analysis, or BPA, refers to the analysis of this collection of structured activities and procedures in order to do three things. First, understand the ASIS existing process. Two, to identify bottlenecks and inefficiencies. And three, ultimately to develop a to be or improved process. A BPA typically involves the collection and analysis of the following information about the business process. Procedures and documents required. Who is involved? The relationship and sequencing of activities and procedures. The rules and regulations governing the procedures. And also the time and the cost involved in completing the different activities and procedures related to the business process. So a BPA is also normally conducted using a specific business process modeling methodology and language so that important attributes of the business process can be systematically recorded and described as a basis to develop a new and improved process. In this course, the modeling language used is called the Unified Modeling Language, or UML. UML provides a set of internationally agreed graphical notation that can be used to describe the business process, and it will be introduced in more details in the next module, module two. Before we move to this module, however, let me highlight why BPA is important for trade facilitation. As you can see in this simplified model of the international supply chain, called the buy, ship, pay model, there are many activities and procedures involved in an international trade transactions. Procedures involved include commercial procedures, transport procedures, regulatory procedures, and even payment procedures. So a key lesson from our work on trade facilitation in many countries of the region is that very few people, if any, have a full and complete understanding of the existing as is trade process, as each stakeholder is directly involved in only part, a small part typically, of the process. In such a context, finding out where bottlenecks really are and which procedures need to be simplified and prioritized will be very difficult without first conducting a BPA analysis. 
Let us take the example of a BPA of the export process of rice from Thailand, conducting a few years ago. The analysis covered all procedures and documentation required, from receipt of a purchase order to the cargo container of rice leaving the Lam Shabang seaport. The BPA revealed that there were 36 documents involved in the export process, and the process also involved 15 different stakeholders. The documents contained more than 1,140 different data elements and were mostly paper documents, with only four of the documents in electronic form. Of the 36 documents, about 14 different documents were associated with regulatory procedures, 17 documents related to transport operations, and 6 documents related to commercial and financial procedures. The 15 stakeholders included customs, as well as many other government agencies, but also private service providers such as shippers, freight forwarders, and banks and insurance. Overall, as you can see in this time procedure chart, which provide a snapshot of the data collected during the business process analysis, the BPA showed that about 16 days were required to fulfill all the procedures and documentation handling for rice exports at the time. 15 distinct procedures could be identified as part of the trade, transport, and regulatory process chain for rice export. Thanks to the detailed and very systematic information collected through the BPA on each of the as-is existing procedures, the main bottlenecks could be identified and a to-be process could be proposed. Ultimately, BPA was the necessary first step towards improving the overall export process. Indeed, BPA provides the information needed to eliminate redundant or unnecessary activities and documents, rearrange activities to make the overall trade process more efficient, okay, and also to move from paper-based processes towards paperless trade. BPA also provides the information to prioritize trade facilitation reforms based on quantitative time and cost data. Finally, looking at the many BPAs of import and export processes that have been conducted over the past several years in Asia on the basis of the UN Next Guide, Beyond the wealth of information that a BPA can provide to prioritize trade facilitation reform and simplify trade procedures, the process involved in conducting BPA can in itself be very beneficial in terms of trade facilitation. Indeed, one of the key issues in trade facilitation is a lack of cooperation and coordination between all the stakeholders involved. So data collection, as well as the validation of the data collected, two very important steps in the conduct of the BPA can provide a unique opportunity to bring all the trade control agencies and the private sector together, helping them to see how their respective activities relate to each other and ultimately leading to closer cooperation among themselves. Well, this takes us to the end of Module 1, and I hope it motivates you to learn more about BPA for trade facilitation. In the next module, Module 2, you will be introduced to the unified modeling language used in mapping the business process. Module 3 will then discuss how to set the scope of a BPA analysis, whether it focuses on a specific procedure or the complete import or export process. Module 4 will focus on the planning of the BPA project and the different steps involved while Module 5 will discuss data collection and process documentation. Finally, Module 6 will discuss how to analyze all the data collected and to develop recommendations. The last module, Module 7, will introduce you to the concept of trade and transport facilitation monitoring mechanism and how such mechanism may be developed through regular conduct of BPA of trade procedures. Thank you for your attention.